Good afternoon and welcome to another Angry Alien Bulletin here on the Angry Astronaut. As you can probably tell, I have returned home to the United Kingdom. Very glad to be here uh, just outside of Milton Keynes. But in that time, boy, I'll tell you, there's been a lot of controversy that's been stirred up over my reporting or rather my uh, repeating of a lot of reporting that was done on the BLC-1 signal from Proxima Centauri or from somewhere in the vicinity of Proxima Centauri. And a whole lot of accusations have been thrown around and a whole lot of people coming to pretty extreme conclusions about things being fabricated, about clickbaiting, that sort of thing. Most of the shade is being thrown at Professor Holland, Professor Simon Holland, who broke this story originally, but still a lot of it's being thrown my way as well. And for good reason, I uh, have gotten a great deal of attention, over 100,000 views at the time of this recording on that particular video. So I understand the attention. And I did a hell of a lot more research to make sure that what I was saying was legitimate, that there was something to back up my claims when it comes to what I was saying about the Proxima signal, and rather what Professor Holland was saying about it and what I was repeating. And after doing an extensive amount of work and also consulting a number of times with John Michael Godier and his producer, who put out a video essentially debunking the entire claim, saying that there is nothing to it, that no new work is being done on BLC-1, and that it remains perhaps a signal of interest, but nothing all that exciting. Well, I'm here to tell you that I stand by what I said. And I'm going to actually go through John Michael Godier's video in detail, talk about every point that he brings up and my opinion on the whole thing. And I want to make one thing very, very clear. I respect Mr. Godier quite a bit. Um, I'm a big fan of his work. And he may be right about this. I'm not going to dismiss the possibility that he could be right. But at the same time, I have very good reason to believe what I believe. And we're going to find out why right now. Okay, so I'm going to go through John Michael Godier's video point by point and give you my reasons as to why I feel differently about this story. First of all, the idea that BLC-1 is an old signal, it's not new, so this is not new news or anything like that. That, in my view, is not necessarily a problem. In my opinion, we need to be looking over old signals all the time in order to be sure that we are absolutely right about them before we discarded them. Indeed, we would not have identified a natural explanation for the wow signal if we didn't spend decade after decade dredging that signal back up. So let's go ahead and talk about number two problem, which is the location. The fact that it came from Proxima Centauri and the extremely unlikely scenario that there would be another civilization that just happened to be there that also made use of radio. Well, the fact that we aren't getting constant signals from Proxima Centauri suggests that there's definitely not a civilization there that makes regular use of radio. Indeed, if there is a civilization there, then they're probably very aware of us, given how often we blast out radio signals. And keep in mind, this signal did not have any data in it. It didn't appear to be anything in regards to a communication of any kind. It might have been something as simple as a radar beam, something used to detect or scan, or perhaps just a beacon of some kind without any real information in it, but just a simple blast of radio waves. Again, in a narrow band signal and that again is what still makes it a signal of interest regardless because there are a number of things about BLC1 that made it interesting in the first place. For one thing, it was scanned for a very long period of time. 
hours and hours actually by the park's radio telescope and when the telescope was turned away from proxima centauri the signal went away and then when the radio dish was turned back towards proxima centauri it reappeared in some ways it could be argued that the signal repeated But, of course, not really, not in SETI's definition of all of that, but that in itself makes it very interesting as a potential interstellar candidate, but certainly not enough. So Mr. Godier goes on to argue that if there is a civilization that close to us, and literally the next star system over, that means the galaxy should be absolutely full of civilizations, and we should see evidence of them everywhere which we do not. Well, that in itself is not necessarily true either, because we do detect signals that have no explanation on a pretty regular basis. The thing of it is, they don't repeat, so they tend to get discarded but that doesn't mean that they're not there and just because a civilization happens to be occupying the proxima system that doesn't mean that they originated from there they may have simply expanded to that star system as a matter of fact the fermi paradox makes the point that given the age of the galaxy the galaxy should be absolutely overloaded with civilizations given the amount of time at their disposal and given the fact that even at the slowest mode of interstellar travel, they should have been able to occupy just about every star system everywhere, and yet they haven't. Or have they? Perhaps they are on Proxima Centauri, and they're here as well, they just haven't announced their presence because we're an extremely violent and unpredictable species equipped with nuclear weapons, and we tend to react with violence even when it comes to Venezuelan immigrants, let alone alien visitors. So if I were them, I probably wouldn't announce my presence either. All that having been the case then, I really don't think that a signal from Proxima Centauri is invalid just because it comes from Proxima Centauri. Now, the frequency, yes, that is a very good point that Mr. Godier makes. The signal was scanned at 982 megahertz, and there tends to be a fair amount of interference that exists at that. We humans use that frequency for all kinds of things. However, the Parkes Radio Telescope was designed to filter out various sources of interference. It should have been able to eliminate those sorts of things, but that does fail from time to time, and it could have been that this was indeed the case where that happened, but most kinds of interference could be ruled out because of the Doppler shifting characteristics of the signal that I mentioned in my previous video. This kind of Doppler shift suggests something in motion, a transmitter in motion relative to the Parkes radio telescope, something that wouldn't apply for earthbound interference, but something that might apply for certain types of satellites, but not most of them, because most satellites orbit far more quickly than this Doppler shift seemed to indicate. The Doppler shift seemed more consistent with something in orbit around either the Proxima or the Alpha Centauri system, although not exactly. It wasn't orbiting, for example, in a way that would correspond with Proxima B, sort of the opposite, actually. Also, it didn't match the rotation of the Earth in the way that a Doppler shift should under those circumstances, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't something in orbit around the Proxima system, but it does rule out lots of different types of human interference. And while I'm on the topic of Doppler shifting, I also need to point out that this is not the only information we have about BLC-1 and its Doppler shift anymore. This is what Professor Holland's video was all about, was the fact that an organization called Astron had access to better information about the signal. Don't really know why or 
what sort of instruments they were using, what sort of data they had at their disposal, but they have analyzed this Doppler shift in much greater detail, and they are apparently convinced, or at least strongly suspect, that this signal did indeed originate in the Proxima system. Now, another point that John Michael Godier brings up is very interesting indeed, and I find it interesting for different reasons than he does. There was powerful flaring coming from the Proxima system at the time that this signal was detected. Perhaps a few days before, little difficult to determine the exact timing on all of this, but the Proxima system was flaring at the time that the signal was received. Now this, in John Michael Godier's opinion, muddies the water because it suggests that maybe somehow some kind of narrow band transmission was sent out from the Red Dwarf at the time of this flaring. Now, I question that because we have never seen evidence of narrowband transmissions coming from red dwarfs in the past, even though we have seen a hell of a lot of flaring from a wide variety of red dwarf stars, but this would be quite unique to have a narrow band signal that appears to maybe be artificial coming from this area at the same time that we have a red dwarf flaring. Could we instead be seeing some sort of warning beacon, some sort of notification to not approach the area because there is a flare in progress? And also, we don't know for certain that red dwarf flaring makes a system uninhabitable anyway. It's possible that the radiation from these flares gets concentrated into the polar regions of the stars and misses the planets entirely. It is for that reason, actually, that the breakthrough through Starshot mission, tends to send a mission to the Proxima system, still regards Proxima B as being an interesting planet. By the way, this is something that John Michael Godier definitely brings up in his video. But also, there is what appears to be the dagger in the heart to the BLC1 story, and that is, of course, the papers that were published in 2021, where a number of signals similar to BLC1 were found all over the sky and all of them were coming from human interference or at least appeared to be coming from human interference but there were problems with these signals none of them seemed to have that same characteristic of nodding as it is called where you point your radio dish at one area of the sky you receive the signal change its location signal goes away point it back towards your source and then it reappears that is something that none of these signals actually did that of course doesn't mean that blc1 wasn't radio interference but at the same time these signals did not share that very important characteristic but the similarity was significant enough for most organizations to simply discard blc1 as being sort of interesting but really not as compelling as some other signals certainly not a techno signature or at least that was the case in 2021 but as I have mentioned a number of times and Professor Holland has as well a lot of new research has been done primarily by an organization called Astron which has access to quite a number of radio telescopes across the world and something about BLC1 has them stirred up now, again, there are quite a number of people who are engaged with SETI, engaged with the search for extraterrestrial signals, who say that this is all hogwash, that it is fabricated, that Professor Holland is making all of this up. And I have to admit, for a while, I was starting to worry about that too. But I asked Professor Holland for additional confirmation that he has been in communication with Astron and that he has this additional information. He didn't have to show me all the details. Just give me some proof that these conversations have been taking place and this additional research is indeed happening. And he did. And at this point, I believe him. And unfortunately, I can't elaborate as to why I believe him. I can't give all those details because I promise not to. In this highly competitive field where the 
first organization to actually confirm the existence of an extraterrestrial signal will become the most famous scientists in history, I can understand why they don't want to go public with their research or want to be really identified until they actually publish what they're studying, which hasn't happened yet. But I can at least hypothesize based on what I know. Astron has access to data from a wide variety of radio telescopes all over the planet. I think it's possible that another telescope besides Parks picked up this signal. BLC-1, and given the distance between these telescopes, they were able to more accurately determine the point of origin, and to confirm that the point of origin is in the Proxima system, or perhaps the Alpha Centauri system, where you don't have all that pesky flaring going on. And it's also possible that a civilization started in the Alpha Centauri system and expanded to the Proxima system, perhaps to set up a research facility or a mining colony or something like that. And then that facility in turn blasted out a warning when Proxima began to flare up again all speculation on my part, a little bit of science fiction creeping into my head, but at the same time, I believe that Professor Holland is indeed telling the truth. I believe that the BLC-1 signal is not a dead issue, that there are scientists, not the usual suspects perhaps, but European radio astronomers who have been quietly studying this signal and are about to publish some very interesting research, or at least hand that research over to SETI. I believe that there's quite a story still going on here, and I'm going to keep investigating it. And one of my objectives that, by the way, I've already discussed with Mr. Godier is the possibility of getting all three of us together. Professor Holland, John Michael Godier and his producer, and myself to go over all the details of this story, make sure we're all in agreement as to what the facts actually are, and then all three channels come out with a piece of content that's really going to knock your socks off. I'll keep you up to date on all of this. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Please consider supporting this channel on PayPal and Patreon. All the details details are in the description, and until next time, stay angry about space.